when I was looking through the various groupings that are in Iraq that are fighting and are active politically or non-politically or in terms of violent activity, I look through them and I troll through all of them. Some of their names I don't even remember. Not a single one of them was Salafist. Not one. Even though they are described by some commentators as being Salafi. Some of them describe themselves as Sunni themselves. Some of them describe themselves as Shia themselves. Some of them describe themselves as Naqshbandi themselves. Some of them describe themselves as secular themselves. Some of them describe themselves as Salafist. But when I analyzed the ideologies and the doctrines of these groups, by Allah, not a single one of them was Salafi. Not one. And when I was looking through all the groups, I said, okay, the secularists are there. Even some of those who have, who have ideologies that resemble socialist ideologies and Marxist ideologies and Baathist ideologies, they are still there. The Shia ideologies are there. The Bin Laden Al-Qaeda ideologies are there. The Khawarij ideologies are there. Even some of the Sufis at the Naqshbandis are there. So I looked at their doctrines and their ideologies over the last two or three weeks. Not a single Salafi. Not one Salafi group is out there. And I said, Alhamdulillah, oh, praises to Allah, no Salafi got involved. Because the Salafi does not get involved in fitna. In times of fitna, we take our sword and we break it on the mountainside. As the Prophet ﷺ said to one of his disciples, he said, when tribulation begins, take your sword, go to the side of Mount Uhud and smash your sword on the side of the mountain and don't go out and fight in the fitna. Times of fitna. In the time of fitna, where being the one who is killed is better than being the one who, who did the killing. These are times of fitna. The Muslim does not get involved. So looking at all of those insurgent groups, and then I looked and I analyzed the statements of the Salafi scholars. I looked at the statements of, for example, Sheikh Al-Fawzan in Riyadh, Salafi scholar. He said, no jihad, and it is a land of fitna, don't go. I looked at the statements of Sheikh Rabia bin Hadi al-Madkhali, who is an arch enemy of the insurgents. They hate him with a vengeance. They declared him to be an apostate, Sheikh Rabia. And they refer to us as the Madkhali Salafis, even on Twitter. They, they make images of dogs, of, 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 of hound dogs, and they put bubbles next to them, referring, them, referring to them as, as the followers of Rabi al-Madkhali. This is how much vengeance they have for us. So the, so the non-Muslims have less to fear than we have. Because when they come to kill, it is the Salafis and the Muslims they will kill before they kill the non-Muslims. Because this is how much enmity they hold towards us. So when, when you look at the Salafi scholars of today and I analyze their statements, Sheikh Al-Fawzan, Sheikh al Luhaydan, and he is the, 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 the head of the judiciary in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. He said no jihad in Syria. Sheikh Rabi al-Madkhali, a professor, a former professor, retired professor from the Islamic University of Medina. He said no jihad. Sheikh Ubaid bin Abdullah al-Jabri, a former lecturer at the Islamic University of Medina, no jihad in Syria. Sheikh Muhammad bin Hadi, a present doctor, a PhD, lecturer in the Islamic University of Medina, no jihad in Syria, no Iraq. All of them. And I could go through a list that continues and continues. Then I looked at the scholars of Kuwait. Same thing. No jihad in Syria. No jihad in Iraq. So I thought to myself, let me look at historically what they've been saying since the conflict began in Syria. Then I went back three years, looking at and analyzing the statements of the scholars for three years, the Salafi scholars, all of them saying, don't go to Syria. You want to help? Give your money to a government organization that will provide health and, uh, uh, and, and surgeries within the refugee camps. And, and, and hospital units, mobile hospital units in the refugee camps in Kurdistan and in Turkey. This is what they were saying three years back. So now the Khawarij, they came with the principle that if the ruler is a disbeliever, then it is obligatory to remove him at all costs, regardless of the consequences. This actual principle of regardless of the consequences is actually a false principle that Islam does not affirm. Because they wanted to remove one man, one leader, What's the result of that? 300 Muslims get, 300,000 Muslims are killed. Over a quarter of a million Muslims get killed because you wanted to remove one man. Over a million in refugee camps and displaced because you wanted to remove one man from his leadership. Yes, he was an oppressor. 
Yes, he is a tyrant. Yes, the regime was repressive. No Muslim denies that. Yes, Bashar Assad's aqeedah, his belief, is a belief that is alien to Islam. We accept that. But to now remove him, without looking at the consequences, and by going out marching in the streets, and regarding that marching in the streets to be an Islamic act, Islam does not condone demonstrations, nor rallies, nor sit-ins, nor marches. These are not from the means of rectification in Islam. They are not considered to be jihad. They are not to, considered to be enjoying the good and forbidding the evil. Because if they were acts that were affirmed by the religion, then who would have done them first? The Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When the Prophet was in, was in Mecca for 13 years, did he ever go even once to go out and demonstrate in the streets? Not even once. Did the disciples ever go out once demonstrating the streets of Mecca? We are, because the, the, the companions in Mecca, make no mistake, they were oppressed. They were being killed. Sumayya radiallahu anha was killed with a spear through her abdomen. Right through her abdomen she was killed with a spear. Sumayya, the first martyr in Islam. And the companions, they were boycotted. They were forcibly separated from their wives. It was forbidden to do business with the Muslims in Mecca. Yet the Prophet didn't say, well actually, we will go out marching tomorrow for social justice because we are going hungry, because they were left hungry. When the Prophet was asked, which was the worst moment in your life that you recall your Messenger of Allah? He said, the moment was when we were boycotted in Mecca and we were left out in the valley. And then, then my wife, she died, Khadija radiallahu anha. And then Abu Talib, my uncle who protected me, he died. So the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam mentioned that affair. Look at the habit of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and how he was. They were boycotted, they were alienated, they were put into hunger and poverty. Yet not once did he go out marching and rallying in the streets and demonstrating against the authorities of Mecca, not once. And not once did he send out an assassin to go and kill any of them. So where is ISIS? And where are these modern day revolutionary jihadist groups as compared to the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam? Jihad itself has conditions that the fuqaha and the Jewish of Islam have been talking about for over a thousand years. These individuals don't fulfill those conditions.